Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode, so let's get to it. It's quite funny the way the fertilizer comes out on here with after the cultivating because of where the um the plants were on there. It is it, it does look amusing looking at that. I know that we got that square there of lime and it bugs me as much as I know it bugs some of you, but grass doesn't actually it's not affected by lime in any way, shape or form. So it's only like a visual when you look at the map. That's the only difference it makes. It doesn't affect performance in any way, shape or form. It is no difference to performance. That has been tested over and over by a number of different people on the Discord channel. Uh, if you're not a member of the Discord and you would like to come along and, and have a, a, a little bit of a chat with people, see what goes on behind the scenes with this channel, there's, there's quite a lot of behind the scenes chatterage that goes on on the Discord. And you can probably influence what happens in the series, like the, the farming series here and any of the other farming series um, any of the series for that matter, and, and also um, more heavily influence what games are played uh, by giving some input over on the Discord. Um, there's a, a lot of people on there, and a lot of different people have their say, and I do, right, don't get me wrong, you influence it by, in the comment section as well, but... The advantage of talking to me on Discord about it is that we can have a back and forth discussion. I can say, right, well, why do you like that bit? What is it about this that you like? What is it about that that you don't like? And this back, the, the back and forth discussion like that, it makes a big difference to things overall because what you're effectively doing is you're explaining the reasons clearly and clearing up any uh, misunderstandings that I might have and... Um, therefore it presents those arguments a little bit better and this might be something that benefits you in the long run so if you really want to have a say if you, if you really want to sort of help influence the way things are run um, yes comments in the comment section are the way forward it absolutely 100% helps by putting reasoned comments in to the comments section. And some of you do a fantastic job of doing that. Um, you, you don't just say, oh, I don't like this or I like that. You put forth a valid, you, you put forth a reasoned argument and you go over several different points. I like this because of this, this and this and, and so on and so forth. That is absolutely priceless. I can really work with that. But if you're just saying, I don't like it, um, because you can't really think of quite why and so on. Come and consider joining the Discord. There's a link in the description down below. Consider joining the Discord and you can come and just like add your opinion to the discussion. Watching other people's discussions is often a very good way of sort of thinking, well, actually, yes, this person's making like a really good point. That's kind of like, that's, that's kind of how I feel about it as well. I haven't been able to really put into words how I feel about it. I just know that I don't like this thing, um, but I don't know why. And then someone else says, I don't like this because of this, this, and this. And then you might think, well, actually, that's, that kind of, that, that makes sense to me. That, uh, that's why I don't like it as well. And then you can say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I like this. this. This is kind of why I, I, I feel the same way. Um, and it helps. It really does help. That helps uh, me decide what I should be doing next and I've talked on there about going for popular maps and the general consensus is please don't don't go for the popular maps for the same reasons that you always put forth this would be me the same reasons I always put forth um, I shouldn't go for the popular maps because everybody else covers them and they very quickly become stale so if I was to seriously consider going for this new oxygen David map on here um, as a replacement for this particular series. Right, we'll do that and we'll lower it down. And we'll move forward like this. Yeah, like that. And then I will press H huh for H. And I'll go back down through there. And then we're going to get our lorry and we're going to empty out the train. Right, that one's going to do that. We're going to get you. 
Empty out the train. I said empty out the train, didn't I? Yeah, we don't want to empty out the train. We want to go and empty out the combine. Um, yeah, consider joining the Discord and you can help influence what happens like this whole thing with uh, Oxygen Davis' new map. Um, because I know that a lot of people have been saying that you really want me to do it. But at the same time, I've got people who are saying, no, please don't. Because it's a really popular map. Everybody's already covering it. And there are so many other maps out there. And there are so many maps that are equally as good as Oxygen David's map. And not to take anything away from Oxygen David, but because he's so well known, he's already got all the publicity. And there are maps out there that don't get any publicity at all that are just as well made as the one that he has put out. And they also deserve some attention. And people have already said on the Discord channel, stick with doing, you know, stick with that principle that you're covering the maps that other people don't cover. Because that's a really cool thing. We get to see content that you don't get to see elsewhere. So, yeah, I'm like, there's arguments for and against both of these. Right, he's backing up there, and if we're not careful, this one's going to catch up with that cultivator up there. I don't think he will. We just have to keep a little bit of an eye on it. But we also want to... Right, that one, we don't need to keep much of an eye on. That one just deal with itself. He's absolutely fine. We, we, we don't need to worry about this one. The Fent Ideal Combine with a case header. What we do want to look at is this bad boy over here. Running up through with the very final plow line. We've got a couple little bits that maybe we could go and tidy up. Uh, but then we're going to take this Gregoire Besson back home. And we're not going to worry about using this one anymore. That field over there doesn't need plowing. So that one we can direct drill. We want to cultivate this field. So if we're going to cultivate this one. And we've got the big bud with the triples. We're going to want to cultivate it with something special, aren't we? Let's go and have a look. Uh, cultivators right in here. And that's the one right there. A 24 meter. That one there is 18.2 meters. And it does. Actually that one gets around the fields a lot more easily than the other one does. The disc harrows in here. These are a lot smaller. That's the biggest one there. It's just 16 meters wide. Uh, you got the horse one there. See that's, that's even smaller still. That's not what we're after. And then you've got the subsoilers in here. These are small. You've got the culti plow. Right, that one there. That, that one's great. Eight meters. That one you can also use in as a, a plow, which is absolutely great. But no. I think this is the one that we want. It's that one there, the flexi coil, right there. And that one, even to lease. This, that's $9,400, and we've only got $8,800. We've already ticked down below... The appropriate amount. Right. Um, that's doing crazy things. So we will pull that one up through there. Like that. Now I've already started planting. I've started planting down in the bottom field. And I was just thinking a second ago that I'm going to regret that. Because um, I possibly should have waited to start planting until tomorrow. I should have fast forwarded time until tomorrow and then we'd have been able to sell a little bit of silage as well so that we can get the seed drill and stuff because right now I don't have the seed drill that we need for the planting right I, I, I want a seed drill and I don't have one um just wondering what else we get how actually actually just leave you there a second yeah you're doing fine uh you're doing fine I'll go to you. This is the one that I want. I want our little Mahindra Retriever right here. And we're going to take this one for a little bit of a jaunt up through here. Like this. I'm just going to check on our egg situation. We've sold eggs too recently. Look. They're all... Like that. they've got little tiny bits of eggs in. But we don't have very much in the way of eggs at all. Well, we've got one full one there by the look of it. And then over here, we've, well, I don't know if all of those six pallets there are actually, 
I'm going to move him over a little bit like that. There. I think that should now get all of them. So we've we've got maybe maybe well we we've got like a few pallets worth. We don't have very much though. We really really don't have very much in the way of pallets right here. I've got one pallet there stuck out on the end. I don't even know why that one's there. Why have I got one extra pallet there? I shouldn't have. That one seems a bit odd. Very curious about why I've got an extra pallet there. Uh, current egg prices. What are we looking at? 4,439. That one's still going up. So egg prices aren't too bad. $1,700 per thousand litres for wool. And we do have... A little bit of wool over here so maybe I could just get the lorry and bring that one back and sell the wool she we might do that 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 should get us just enough to be able to lease cultivator and planter uh, although we're still not gonna have enough money to buy the seed that we need hmm problems I didn't think this through did I I probably shouldn't have bought the combine I probably should have just leased the combine if I'd leased it then we wouldn't have these issues so it's entirely my own fault there's no one to blame but myself right here. Right, you're on 50%, and well, you're doing fine. The big buds... Well, we get back to you. We can't really do a lot with you at the moment because you're, um, you're currently... Yeah, I, I can take you back to the shop, but I can't do anything else with you. So what we'll do is we'll go up to the train. Uh, to the train. It's not a train, Frith. It's, com it's a combine. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll unload the combine. Then I can leave the trailers in the field for a minute, and I can go down to the farm. I can get the small flat trailer on, the um, the auto load trailer on. Right, you stop there, stop there, stop there, stop there, stop, 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 stop. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we're going to get that trailer on. We'll get the wool, and we'll take that over. We will sell the wool. That should give us enough money to lease the cultivator. And lease the planter as well. And we're going to want that big planter to plant this field and plant the field over there after we've cultivated it. We don't need to worry about cultivating this field. We just need to worry about planting this field. Um, and yes, technically, we don't need to go and um, cultivate that field over there. But we've plowed it, so we should. All right? Real life, you would go along with it. If you plowed it, you would then cultivate it. Uh, so we go like that. So this is, this is our order of operations. We're going to need to take this one back down to the farm. We get that trailer. We can get that wool. We can sell the wool. Then we can go and return the trailer and the wool pallets, obviously. Uh, then we can head back up here with the lorry and hitch back in so that one's ready to unload the combine again because that combine will just keep running. And then we can get the big bud over to the shop. I might actually just buy the stuff at the shop beforehand and I go in this way um I might as soon as we sold the wool we will lease the seed drill and the cultivator and so that's like ready to roll then we don't need to worry about it and then uh th then we can we can deal with the rest we're probably gonna have to sell some more stuff maybe go and round up the eggs in order to be able to buy all the seed that we need to do the planting that's that's the only downside to all of this is that we're still going to need to do a little bit more but it shouldn't take too long to be able to get it all right we'll run this down here and that cultivator uh, sorry not the cultivator the planter is catching up to the cultivator quite quickly down here if you look there although the cultivator is getting near the top end of the field so it's it is speeding away should be all right let's bring that down here and I think it's going to be all right. It's nice seeing them work together in the fields. Right? It, it is nice seeing them just working away together in the field like that without us having to micromanage them. I mean, well, not, not. We are sort of micromanaging them a bit, I suppose. Helper G has completed their task. Who is Helper G? Oh, that's you. Right, you're not Helper G. Helper G is not you. You. Right, you most definitely have not finished your task. I was just literally, right, I was literally just praising you to people and, and your overall performance 
and you go and do that to me. You go and show me up like that after all those kind words that I've just said about you. And you go and do that to me. Right? I mean, I'm serious. You, you, you've really let me down, man. I, I thought you were better than that. Genuinely feel like you've let me down there. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, I feel disappointed with that. I really do. I, I thought that they were better than that. And now I'm, I'm left feeling disappointed. This is not good. Right, the, the reason I'm coming over here is because I'm going to press H and I'm going to stop that one. I'm just going to leave that one there for a second so that cultivator can pull a little bit further ahead. Because otherwise we're going to forget about it while we are dealing with this one. Um, now, the, the price of wool is not brilliant at the moment at 1700 I know that we can get above 2000 on the easy settings that we have. But, that being said, we need the money. And I'd rather deal with the wool than anything else, because the wool is closer than the other stuff. That's why we're going for the wool. Uh, we have pallets already selected, so if we press U and turn the auto loader on, we should load up. Okay, he said press U. I didn't press U. I pressed a different button. Okay, now I will turn that one off, and then I will unload that onto the lorry, and I will leave it like that. There we go. All strapped down. Nice and tight. And then we go whizzing along up here. And we will go and sell this $1,700 liter, uh, $1, per thousand liters. Which is not a bad price for our wool. That's going to be... It's like well, we're not going to make millions out of this. We haven't got enough to... We haven't got enough liters of wool to make millions. But Helper G has completed their task. I'm starting to get a bit annoyed with Helper G. Right? I, I, I've been saying what a good job that Helper G has been doing, and they're repeatedly letting me down. I don't feel... Like, uh, uh, honestly, am, am I being unreasonable here? Uh, am I being unreasonable saying that they've let me down like this? Because I... I don't know. I, I, I honestly... I, I, I just don't know. I, I thought that... Um, I thought that I wasn't being unreasonable previously, but maybe I am. Tell you what. In order for it to avoid confusing itself, in, in order for the, the computer and, and the, the, well, the hired, in order for the hired help to be able to cope with things, we'll start them up here. We'll start small up here, and we'll see if they can cope with that. Right, you think you can cope with that? This is where I get a message in a minute to say Helper G has completed their task. So get up to the other end. Because there's a buried tree stump up there that we haven't been able to get... Well, that's in, haven't been able to. We haven't gotten rid of. Um, I can see that happening, actually. I can definitely see that happening. Right, we'll come up to here. And it does sometimes interfere with the game if you try to sell stuff with the straps still on over the pallets. So if we do it like that. And then I'm going to bring that back a bit. And I want to unload it there and then pull out from underneath it. Okay, let me move back down there and unload. There we go. I want to pull out from underneath it like that. Right, so we've now just sold. Uh, what would that have been? $55,000? About $55,000 worth of wool. That's, that's not too bad. That's not bad, really. So while we're just... Okay, we, we can stop there a second, and we can go into here, and we want to go to cultivators, and I want to go over here. Flexi coil right there, a 24-meter flexi coil cultivator, $9,500 lease. Yes, thank you very much. And then back, and back again, and then I want to go to planters. Uh, not planters, no, cedars. It's a seed drill that we're after this time, not a planter. And we want to go up through here. So we've got that Seed Hawk XL 84 foot or 26 meter bar right there. Wait a minute, I thought there was another one. That's the Terminator. Oh no, it's, no, that's, that's the Vardastad right there. That's a different one. Maybe I got this wrong, maybe it's under planters. No. I thought there was one that was the same color as the one that I've got now. Maybe, no, maybe I got that wrong. Oh. I don't remember. It's been a long time. 
I know that we've got like the, the one that I've got right now. So then you go you go with that one and then there was that one there, wasn't it? The Terminator. I remember the Terminator because then that one there, it was the, uh, what's it called? The the Hatson, Hat, Hat, Hatson Bickler? I don't know. Hatson Bickler, the Austrian agrotechnic. This is used in Austria? That seems very big for Austria. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure there are big fields in Austria, but it still seems like a re really huge thing. Uh, the Seed Hawk XL toolbar right there, 25.6 meters. I thought there was one like the flexi coil thing that we've um, gone and got. But anyway, well, we use this one. This, this, this is one we'll go for. So that one there, I want to lease that. There's $15,000 for that. $300,000 for a seed drill. Then it is quite a, a, a unique and special looking seed drill, isn't it? And then that one. Yeah, there was one. There was a seed hawk. It wasn't Vardastab, though, with, with with the other ones. Right, so you got uh, rear twins, standard, rear twins. Let's go with the rear twins. Uh, lease that one as well. Yes. Okay. So now I'm thinking we want to fill this one up with seed, but we are not going to have enough money to be able to fill this with seed and fertilizer. We absolutely, with $28,000 at the moment, that's not going to be enough. Not for any of it. I mean, I, right, we bring that back into there, look, and I'll put the strap back on. Helper H has got a nearly full grain tank. So I, what I'm kind of thinking next is we go and put these pallets back. I don't know if this lorry would be able to tow that seed hawk. If this one can tow the seed hawk, we could bring it back here to the farm and we could load it up back here. And it's not going, like, I'm not going to lose a lot of time by bringing it on that sort of round trip. I'm definitely not going to lose much time by bringing it through there. Uh, uh, like, taking the truck that way rather than straight up over to get the trailers. Because we need to go up there. And that's, that's the next point that we need to go to. I've got a thing, a pallet of wool right there. I'm going to just shunt that one up out of the way because I don't want that one. I don't want that one involved. That one can stay up there for a minute. Okay, so I want to go to here. I want to take those straps off. And then I'll press U like that. Uh, I'll press U again. And then we press B like that. That load. Yeah. And then Y. I just dump them down there. That, I think that's actually where they need to go. It's not straight. It's definitely not straight. But so, so long as there's sort of all six of them are like covering that point, it's fine. Um, so we can bring this one over here. And next up, I need to be able to go up to that combine and we want to unload it. So if I, like I said, if I go this way first, and we'll just see if we can tow that seed hawk with this truck. Because if we can, we'll be able to bring that one down here. I don't need to bring it down immediately. I can still whip up to the field first and we can unload the combine. Then we can turn around and we can go back to the seed hawk and we can drag that one down here with this lorry with this truck um get that one loaded up or at least spend as much of our money you know get as much seed into it as we can and then that's ready to roll that's that's ready to go then it can be collected with the big bud or we can bring it back up this way before we collect it with the big bud um and then next on the list we would want to get the big buds back well Next on the list is getting the big bud back down here and returning the Gregoire Besson plow. We're not going to be using that one again. And instead of using that, we would uh, we, we get a cultivator or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Probably the culty plow situation. And it does. Look at that. Right, that's brilliant. We'll be able to take that back down to the farm in a minute. We're not going to do it yet. We need to go up to the combine first. We've got a fair bit of running around to do at the moment. We want to go up to the combine, hitch up on our hitch our trailers up in the field up there, run over to the combine and get that unloaded because, well, you know, we could just go to the combine and the combine could itself just move over to the trailers. Except that, I don't know where it is in the field. It could be the opposite end of the field. It's, it's quicker just to do this. By the time I tab through the machinery, I'll be up there and then back again. Um, he says... Because it takes longer to get up here than it 
thought. Helper F has completed their task. Who is Helper F? Yes, I was right. Because the trailers are right down the other end of the field. So we go in here. For the time, yes, it would have been quick. It, this is definitely the quicker option because if I'd done it the other way and brought the combine out, I'd have had to go halfway across the field, then unload, and then go back again. This, this is definitely quicker. May not have saved us a huge amount of time, but it has saved us a little bit of time, and that's what counts. So we bring you over here, and I'm only putting grain in the front trailer at the moment. I'm not putting grain into the back trailer at all because we don't currently need to. So I may not need. I can just probably unhitch that one over at the BGA and leave it there for a bit. Uh, so I bring you back round here. Now I did hear a rumor that if you unhitch a trailer underneath the combine and you just like leave it it doesn't like it and it does strange things so we're gonna see we're, we're gonna watch what happens i'm gonna leave that one there and we're going to i'm gonna stop here and we're gonna, just gonna watch that one empty out a minute and we're gonna see i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna go over i'm not gonna sit on the train either i'm gonna sit over here and i'm gonna watch it combine train I keep calling it a train what what is wrong with me today right We'll watch that one empty out, and then we'll see if it moves. Oh, there we go. And it did. It was an issue that some people were reporting, was that if they parked up in the field next to it, it wouldn't, that like the hired help wouldn't start up again after it had emptied. You had to physically move away, but I'm guessing that was in before the, the latest patch. Um, it's not something I ever actually noticed. I'll bring that one into here. And I will hitch on this one. There we go. Fantastic. Right. Before we do that, I want to go to the this tractor right here. Let's have a look. Okay, we've missed. There's a couple of little bits there. I don't think that really matters. I will just go over. As I'm here, I will just go over them. And then we can move this one off out the way and we can let the sea drill carry on. So there's another job that is sort of almost done and completed, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, right. I'll leave that one there a second, and if I very quickly go over to here, start that one up, and let the hired help carry on with that one, we will go back over to you. And I will drive this one back down to the yard, and we'll unhitch it down there so that one is all done and finished with. And then... We go back up to the truck. We will bring the Vardastad Seed Hawk thing down here and we will start loading it up. Now, the problem with that one is that it takes massive amounts of both seed and fertilizer. And we're going to have to judge very carefully how much of each that we can actually put into the machine. Because uh, we've got limited funds and I don't think we're going to be able to fill it up. All right, I'm going to have to just drop that one like that. Okay, the, the, the tractor can stay there. And then we go over to you. Am I going to be able to unfold this one? Is there something I'm going to be able to do? I think what we will do, though, once we've filled this one up, we'll bring it back up this way and uh, put it back into the dealership yard once he's full. Or at least he's got as much as we can put in it. Because, I mean, $27,000 at the moment. That's what we've got. And we might need... We may end up using every single penny of that. So if we fill this one up. And then we bring it back up here. And uh, we'll leave it up there. And then the big bud can take it from there up to the two fields up at the top. Once he's done with... Well, he's got to do the cultivating first, isn't he? So we'll let him do that. And then he can come back down through. And he can do the other bit. Uh... There's a root crop currently in field 8. The biggest field. I think it's field 8. And unfortunately, the root crop... Well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.